Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jed's Journey. Today we're going to be working on part two of the sweet potato slips. My slips are a lot bigger than they were the last time I did a video and it's time to up pot them. So come along with me to my kitchen and I'm going to show you how that's done. Okay, so in this tote here is where I've been keeping my sweet potatoes. Um, if you didn't know from my last video, I have cats and my cats like to eat anything that is green. So cats I have to keep in a tote to protect them. And, uh, and also with sweet potatoes, they like, like a tropical environment. So this helps keep in the heat and the moisture as well. So they really like that. But um, they're starting to get too big and it's time to get them up potted. All right, so these are the sweet potato slips that I had taken off my sweet potato and put them in their own jar so they could start developing the roots away from the sweet potato. And you can see just how big these guys are and all the little roots that they're growing. Um, they've got quite a few roots here. Um, but it's time to get them up potted because there's no nutrients in the water at all. And they're going to start needing nutrients now. They're starting to um, get a little pale in color um, because there's no nutrients in the water. So we're going to up pot these into, I have, um, these are two and a half or three inch nursery pots. And um, I'm just trying to up pot them once so I can uh, do less damage to the roots. Um, because every time you up pot a plant, you're stressing it out. So the less times you have to up pot, the better. So I'm going with this big uh, two and a half or three inch uh, nursery pot. And then I have some high quality organic soil. Um, I tend to use Happy Frog. Um, it's really good, high in nutrients, micronutrients, and all that kind of stuff. And it really works well. Um, I don't have to add any uh, fertilizers or anything at this point um, because we're just basically growing seedlings so they don't need a lot of fertilizer right now. We don't want them to grow too much. We just want them to maintain uh, their current health because it's uh, not even the middle of February yet and I won't be able to plant these guys for about another three months. So um, we have to keep them uh, healthy but not like growing a lot. So I'm just going to take my containers and put some soil in it. So I'm making quite a bit of mess, but I really don't care. Cleans up pretty easy. So, all right. <clears throat> take our jar here. So we're just going to carefully separate these guys so the roots don't get too damaged. Alright, there we go. Look at the root system on this guy. That's a lot of roots there. Very healthy. The same with this one. Very, very nice root system. So, doing very, very well. So we're just going to take them and we're going to put them in the pots. That's all there is to it, really, on this part. And just dig a hole with our fingers, put them on down in there, put the soil around it. Come on down in there. Okay. Now we're just going to top these off with some more soil and then we're going to water them. Okay, now that these guys are up potted and they're thoroughly watered, I'm just going to let these sit for a few while the extra water drains out. I'm going to show you what my other um, uh, sea slips are looking like and what to do with those. So we'll be right back. Okay, so for you, if you're wondering, this is just a uh, jelly jar. It's a pint jar. Um, and this is big enough for what I uh, need for my sweet potato slips. But you can use any container that's uh, deep enough because uh, you want to be able to support 
the height of the sweet potato slips when you put them in here. So um, this works very well. You don't want a shallow container for the slips because they'll fall over and uh, it's just hard to get them going without the support. So I highly recommend something about this size for the sweet potato slips to go in once you take them off the sweet potato. And now I'm going to show you my sweet potato. So this is my sweet potato. I had taken all those slips that you saw uh, just a little while ago off this um, in my last video and then just put this back in the water and I have a lot more slips. Um, you can see I have some um, mold and some rot going on because of the high humidity in that tote. But overall, most of these slips are pretty healthy and we can trim off uh, the bad section so I'm not too worried about it. Um, the sweet potato itself is starting to show that it's um, getting old and moldy. So I won't be using this anymore. I'm going to be throwing it in uh, with my chickens and they'll be able to enjoy what's left of the nutrition in the sweet potato. So I'm just going to take this out of my container here. And you can see that beautiful root system that's been supporting this potato this whole time. And I have absolutely no water left in my jar. Um, so it's been recirculating um, the moisture in the dome or the tote and uh, that's what's been keeping this going so <clears throat> But again um, Getting these slips off is pretty easy. I'm going to take out the uh, Toothpicks here so I don't stab myself All right. And then you just um, pop them off right where they connect to that sweet potato and you don't have to worry about damaging the roots too much as long as you're careful. This one is pretty rotten, so we're going to throw that away. Alright, there we go. Alright. So, I take that one's rotten too. I have, as you can see, I had a quite a few sweet potatoes out, slips already so I'm not too worried about losing some of these because of the moisture but uh, we're still going to save some. I'm going to grab my scissors. These guys are quite hardy because I can't snap the stems so that's a good sign. And we're just going to cut off the, the moldy damaged portions here so we don't spread disease. So there we go, we have six slips this time that are good and healthy. I'm going to take our jar, and again I use uh, distilled water, um, that way it doesn't have anything in it that might prevent the growth of the sweet potato slips. And I just fill it up, and then put the slips in, like so. Eh, I'm going to take off some of the yellowing leaves here. Oops. I generally take off any leaves that are going to be below or near that water line so they don't cause mold and, and make diseases. There we go. But it's as simple as that. So I'm going to put this back in my tote along with the um, other plants and we're going to vent the lid a little bit but they'll stay in there for another couple months and uh, hopefully by then it'll be warm enough where I can plant these guys but if not it might be warm enough for them to go in my greenhouse so I'll show you guys that in uh, the next video on where we go from here so thank you so much for watching I hope this video was informative and helped you uh, make a decision on whether to try growing sweet potato slips or not in the process of, of how you do it. So until next time, everybody, I hope wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Bye.